recording on. We are now recording. And as I said, I will stop recording at the very um, Q&A time because that's to preserve your privacy. And it's really for the benefit of everybody here in the room. So how do you become an expert in your customer? Okay, let's talk about that because we spent a lot of time already just talking about the logistics of getting everything done here. And how you can become an expert is really knowing how to reach your customer. This is critical because we have a lot of times where we think that we're our best customer and we are not. So we might hang out on TikTok or Instagram Reels or maybe we're really good at email writing or we go to LinkedIn groups, but that might not be where our best customer is. So we have to remember that even if we started our business designing something or developing something because we had a need, it does not mean that we are now at the level or the place where our best customer is. We need to remember where that starting point is and we need to know where to reach our customers. And it's not just all the big dogs. The hardest question I ever get is, what social networks do I need to be on? Well, the answer is, wherever your best customer is. And until I know your best customer, I can't say. If your best customer really spends a lot of time on TikTok or now known as X or maybe threads, then that might be where you need to be. But I don't know till I have a really good understanding of you, who your best customer is. And you need to know that too. That is why we spent a lot of time yesterday talking about who is that best customer? The one that gives you the most pleasure and profit. Because a lot of times people will say that they can serve anybody, everybody, and somebody. And they will get their second cousin nobody because that kind of messaging is diluted, vague. And when people see that in text and in pictures and in video, it is not something that resonates with them. Your best customer needs to be able to see what you're writing and think, oh my gosh, they get me. They have the answer to whatever it is that I need. They are searching for your product, service, or solution, and you need to make sure that they know it's for them. I always am concerned about a business that says the answer that their best customer is anybody that fogs a mirror, because that's a business in distress, because they are just casting this wide net. It doesn't mean that you cannot serve everybody that fogs a mirror. But if your messaging is that vague and that general, then online, you're never going to make it. All right, so keep that in mind. You also need to know how they engage, what's important to them, okay? So yesterday's slides are not at the link. No, yesterday's, where is it? Yesterday's link. This is today's slide for today's link. Yesterday's, we're at yesterday's link. So today we actually have these slides. If you need the link to yesterday, let me know by email because I'm not going to be able to keep that on the chat box, but let me know that by email and just reply to the email that invited you to the session, okay? Or get with a Google partner who invited you. Now you can also engage, know how those customers engage. Do they, are they more video focused? Do they like the quick Twitter thread? Um, or maybe they just like the real combo that's happening or conversation that's happening in threads. What do they like to engage and how do they consume information? Understand that for us, the heavy lifting that we do is being experts in our customers. We really need to know them backwards and forwards and what they need, what their pain points are, what challenges they have, what pitfalls await them. And then when we say convert, if you look here at the very top right hand column, convert is how do leads become customers? So even though I'm saying convert and even in the nonprofit world, that might be somebody becomes a volunteer, a sponsor, a donor. It is a success action that you want them to take that gets them closer to the goal that you want and you closer to the goal for your business. Goals are very important and they have to be smart. Smart tested, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. That's smart, so they have to be smart tested. And then, do you sustain your customers? Understand that sustaining your customers is very important because we always know that it's very expensive to be able to um, go and get a new customer as opposed to have a current customer do more business with you. That's increasing the lifetime value, the LTV. You heard that acronym quite a bit in marketing, the lifetime value of your customer. You need to increase that. It also engages them to be able to share you with their circle of friends through referrals, recommendations, and reviews. And if you can connect with their friends and their contacts and colleagues, now you come in and you open up at a contact sphere where you have a higher trust level. So as we look through here, when we look at a website, for example, because let's face it, after 2020, if you don't exist, when somebody's Googling you or looking for you or searching for you and you do not have an online property, and an online property doesn't just mean your website. It could be Etsy. It could be that you're using a Facebook page. All of that, the big thing with all of those tools is can you track and can you absolutely um, attribute 
where all of your traffic's coming from because a lot of times people make decisions on their gut instincts and what got you here will not get you to the next level. So your gut has served you well, but you need some actual information and feedback from your customer. Remember what I said about our hard work is becoming experts in our customers. And in order to know them, we need to know exactly what they need, what information, how they're consuming information. And don't just always rely on what people say. So it has been 16, 15 years since I've been on TV. I used to be on CBS here locally in the Midland Odessa area and I come in every Thursday and be the business coach. I will still bump into people in the grocery store. It's been 16 years ago, 15 years ago since I've been on TV who will tell me, I saw you this morning. So people don't even remember exactly, right? We think it's this morning, it was seven years ago, 10 years ago. So keep that in mind. It's important for us when we're looking at our online property, whether you're using an actual website or you're using something else like a Facebook page or an Instagram page, we need to be able to look at the analytics and see what's happening in real time. This is vital to us because let's say you just posted something on Facebook or Instagram, TikTok, and maybe you did an email marketing and it comes out and you want to see whether or not there's any lift on your site. You should be able to, if you release something now and there's a call to action on your Facebook page for them to come and sign the contact form, download the form, watch the video, whatever that call to action is, you you should be able to see whether or not they come to your site and where they came from. Did they come from Facebook? Did they come from your email marketing? You should be able to see all of that. Google Analytics gives you that. It's 100% free. By the way, everything, every single thing that I'm talking about today is 100% free. Okay, so as we look at this, you know, who is your audience? Not only do you need to know real time, but who is your audience as well? Who visits the site? Who is that best customer that gives you the most pleasure and profit? Well, I can serve any customer that is online that's a small business. I always say the best customer for me is used to outsourcing. So they have an accountant, attorney, or they've worked with an SBDC, they have a counselor, a score counselor, but they're used to taking other advice other than just what's in their own head. So that's really important. And maybe you have those different demographics and even psychographics, the way somebody acts and what they need to do or what they believe in order to be able for them to do business with you. Where do they come from? That's what acquisition is. Where did they come from? Do you have that tracking? What's their behavior? What do they do on your site? This is really important for you as you become an expert in your customer. For example, if you had a physical store and they went into aisle one all morning long, they came into your store and they went into aisle one and aisle three and then they left, one three left and they never bought anything. But then in the afternoon, they would come into aisle one, aisle four, aisle three, and now they bought one, four, three. Now I have questions. Now I want to know, is it the person in the afternoon that's the best customer? What's on aisle four that really is encouraging them to buy? So for example, for your website, if they come in all day, all morning long and go to page one and page three and they leave your site, do you know that? Do you see what's happening? Do they go from one to four? And what do they look at for? Do they look at the top of the page, the middle? Did they read the video or watch the video? Did they read or download the PDF and leave the contact form? Did they bounce off to go absolutely to your, your socials for social cred? Or did they go to your competitor site? Do you track that? Because you can track that all for free within Google Analytics. And again, I'm not selling anything with a free personal Gmail account, so you don't even have to have the paid workspace account. You can get Google Analytics and attach that. And you can also see what's converting. What you can see actually is happening on your site. Do people watch the video? Do they watch just the first 10 seconds? Do they watch all the way to the halfway point? Do they look at maybe three quarters of it and then they start looking at your product or service or start reading information that can help them decide to do business with you or to move forward and make an appointment? So really understanding that customer's behavior, those who were here yesterday saw me do this, that people are searching for information all different places. And it's important for us to know the words and the places where our customers look so we can be there for them and we can help them avoid pitfalls. Because if you can do that, if you have the great opportunity of getting to know who your customer is before they're in the looking zone, so when we're in the looking zone, we all are a commodity. So we compete on price. When somebody's ready, they're ready to go. It doesn't matter really too much what we do, but if we have a relationship that's more transactional, more than transactional with them, 
if we know them steps before they're in that looking zone, then what is so cool is they will step over dollars to do business with us because we helped them avoid pitfalls. We helped anticipate. We took away fear because we let them know what the next step is. We were there and we served them when they needed and they will develop a loyalty to us. So this is really important for us to keep in mind in that journey. Do we look for video? Do they need text confirmation? Do they need to read research? And you heard me say that just a moment ago. I wholeheartedly believe this because I see way too many businesses waste a lot, a lot of money trying to do this. And I don't encourage anybody to do any in promotion until they get this right. Because if you don't get this right, you'll spend a lot of money and a lot of, you'll, there'll be a lot of heartache and a lot of loss from you trying to figure this out while you're spending at the same time. It's confusing to people and you only have a short window to be able to get a good first impression. It's still very lasting, whether it's online or offline, your first impression. So what's your niche? This is really important. You hear people say niche down, but what is it that you do extremely well? So a niche is what you do. So very, very well. Your target market is who you do that to, okay? Or do that for. Your niche is what you do so very well. So that's your superpower. And your target market is who you do that for or do that with, okay? So as we look through here, there are five stages of awareness and if people don't know that you exist, they cannot do business with you, okay? So if they're not aware that you exist, then they can't. So the first part is to be absolutely aware that you even exist. If they don't know this, how can they know to search you? How can they know to find you? This is the hardest thing whenever I'm talking to people about being online because if you're not showing up on the first page, so we go to mobile first. 93% of us go to mobile first when we want to know, go do or buy. If you're not in that first page, so on this four and a half inch screen, if they have to scroll up, then you lose the opportunity of being at the top of search and you want to be at the top of search because at top of search, if they can find you several times, in fact, in search, that confirms that you are the best at what you do and it doesn't matter what our budget is, we always want to do business with the best. Even if you're product based, if your product doesn't show up there, you are very much in the trenches trying to fight as a commodity with different offers, different sales, and always having to do discounts. So as we look here, are they product aware? What is it that you have? Is your service a product? Are they aware of what your solution is? Or are they completely unaware? All right. So it's again, this is solution to it should say product, solution and service. Sorry, that last one should have been service here. Or are they just totally unaware? Where are they at? If they're not doing business with you, what would be happening with them? Think about that for a moment. If they're not doing business with you, what would they be doing? Would they be doing it themselves? Would they be in trouble? Would they be losing money? Would their home be flooded? You know, what is it that you provide them that gets them to what their goal is? Either it could be, hey, I want you to fix the stopped up sink, or maybe it's 103 degree weather and I would like my AC to work. So if that they're going to be trying to run around in their vehicle, they've got fans going on, what is it that they are doing if they're not doing business with you? If your product fails them, what are they going to be doing? So I work with a lot of product-based businesses because I work in e-com, but I also absolutely work with people who have services too, who are very local based. And with product-based businesses, understand you've got a short time frame to show you are an expert and you deliver on what you say. And what is it that if they didn't have your solution, what would they do instead? All right. So list out how your solution actually works in five steps or less. This is critical because what happens to us, and this is the biggest challenge we have as people close to our business, is we know this much about our business, so much, and trying to whittle it down and when you only have a few seconds to get somebody's attention. So understand, if a site, a website, doesn't load in 1.2 seconds, over half, 53% of that traffic leads. Now, if you're an e-commerce site, that's 1.8 seconds. So you get a little bit of grace because you're loading more pictures and products and video there, but not much. And it needs to load on a mobile device. This is the big thing. So understand before 2020, it was about four, four you had 4.3 seconds um, before people would do that. But we know in 2020, every became, everyone went online for everything. I mean, it used to be when I would ask for video calls, you know, beforehand, if let's say, you know, I was in Odessa and I had a meeting in Midland, I said, hey, let's just do a video call. No, we would always have to meet in person. People didn't do video calls and now 
you know, there's so many video calls, right? So can we put our solution together in five words or less? Because we don't want to just tell everybody these are the amazing functions of what we have and what we can do. We need to connect the dots for them. That's our job on what we have, our product, service, or solution, how that can serve them and get them to their ultimate goal. What is that goal? Well, it's important for us to know, and that's our job as the business person, bringing that product, service, or solution to them. One of the things that you can do is find out a little bit more about how your people search your best customers by going to Google Trends. And I'll showcase all of these. I'll do a live demo as I finish up the session here so you can see all of these at work. But Google Trends is really important. It is a free tool as well. And you can look, for example, and see what people are searching for about your business right now. So if you want to see what they're searching about your business or your industry, you could go to g.co slash trends. I'm going to drop that right here in the chat while I'm thinking about it. And you can absolutely see what people are actually looking for and then gauge what they're also looking around then too. Because it's important for us to know as a whole where our customers are looking. Sometimes our competitors are not just a direct business that does what we do. It could be who, who's also competing for that same dollar. Okay. So as we look here, are you visible? That's important because if people don't know you exist, then they can't do business with you. Business profiles. How many of you have a Google business profile? All right. And you can have, let me dispel some myths right now. If you are by appointment only, if you are home based, if you are digital only, you can still have a Google business prof profile, but most people don't know how to absolutely go in there and set up their Google business profile. And so they are often suspended because they try to do it in a way that doesn't go with Google's T's and C's terms and, and conditions. Okay. I have a Google business profile. Wonderful. Understand Google business profile is a free tool. It is how you can, you can control your information on Google search and maps. And don't we want that? When I hear somebody say, oh my gosh, I can't find myself on Google and Google finds this and this is an old business. I know that they're not controlling their information and they're hoping that online will. The people that are making comments online saying this business is correct or this, or potentially their competitors are controlling it, okay? I had one, but it asked for images of a shop. Yes, Naomi, it will if you say that you have a shop. You don't have to, if you're home base, you can show your actual work area. So I would show everything you see back here. That's what I would show. I wouldn't go out to my house and go to the front and look at, you know, show my, the front of my house or where my kiddos are or anything like that. I would show the workspace because I know that will get you through on a video verification. And I'm, in fact, I'm just discussing that today in our market and moments community. But I do know that people, when they see the Google business profile, they see there's a lot of validity. Plus you control what you actually see in Google search and maps. Now, now, how many of you know that Google is the biggest library of the World Wide Web? So it's not the World Wide Web, but it's the biggest library. So this was your main concern for coming here, but I'm home based. Yes, you can absolutely suppress, just so you know, if you're home based, you can suppress your address from showing up. So Google does not see it on search and maps, nor does the public, but you can show that you serve the area. That's what I do. I show actually that I serve Midland, Odessa, and for me, there's also, you know, we've got um, not too far from us, Andrews, Seminole, we've got Greenwood. So I say I serve all of those areas, but I never disclose my location because I don't want people showing up at my doorstep. Okay. I connect with people online. That's what I do. But I also come see them in person when I speak. So you absolutely can do that. Now, for those of you who think that Google is the World Wide Web. It is not. It is the biggest library of the World Wide Web. So if you did not know that, then you may not know that there's a door to a library. So a lot of times people will throw up a website and just hope that somebody will find it. And while Google bot is good, sometimes it can take 90 days to find you. And who has 90 days to wait on cash flow? Whenever we're ready to market something and put it online, we want visibility and the market and our best customer to find us. Well, you could control all that by putting all of your things in Google's library, but you are in charge of that. This again is 100% free. And I'll show you a little bit when I go to the live demonstration, how you can check whether or not you even have everything in Google's library. If you just put things up and you never entered things in the library and Google bot just found you, it might have just found bits and pieces like page one or page two of your site, or maybe your Facebook page or your LinkedIn company page, but it didn't find everything. 
Google Shopping. For those of you that are product based, let me find out in here who's product based. Just let me know in the chat box because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this if you're not product based, but if you are, I'll spend a little bit of time. And okay, e commerce, perfect. Sharon, thank you. See, I love this. Just let me know. Use that chat box. So, Sharon, I don't know. Yes, Tony. Hey, Tony, I see you. Good morning. So, at shop Google Shopping is free. Now, a lot of people think it's Google Shopping ads. That is paid. Anything ad based is where you have to pay. But there's a lot in Google that's free. And Google Shopping, so that's Google Merchant Center, is 100% free. And if you've got a Shopify store, you're golden. But I know WooCommerce and BigCommerce also connect with, um, with the Google Merchant Center. But I just know Shopify really, really well because that's predominantly the stores that I work on in e-commerce. But what happens then is if you use Google Shopping and you put Google Merchant Center together, then where your actual product can show up is in Google Shopping tab, Google Images. It also shows up in Google Lens. If you've not used Google Lens, that is an AI that Google's had well before ChatGPT even launched. But with Google Lens, most of us have this on an Android phone. You can snap a picture of something and it'll bring up who has that locally, where they can find it, the approximate cost, and they can click through or they can buy it on Google even if you've set that up because there is the ability to pay on Google. The less clicks sometimes, the more opportunity somebody will absolutely buy from you. Oh, perfect. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yes. See, you could sell your jewelry there. So let's say that I'm at a, um, let's say I'm at a baby shower, right? And I see some, just this beautiful necklace and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just so gorgeous. Where'd you get it from? And, and a lot of times if they don't know, they'll say, you know, oh, it's been a few years. I got it as a gift. I can't really remember. I might say, oh, can I just take a real quick picture of it and look? And once I take that image, Google does an image search with Google Lens and brings up everywhere that has it online, especially close to them. And if you're not there, then it can't deliver you. Remember what I said? If you're not visible, people can't do business with you. If service, you're in services, no worries then that you would not use Google Shopping, but you would use Google Search Console to make sure that you've entered your information, Gwen, into Google's library. Um, AC and heating as well too, unless you had things like, um, let's say you sold filters on your, your site or pumps or connections, anything like that, then that would be e-commerce based and you could absolutely use Google Shopping. Make sense to everybody? All right. I may have missed some questions there because I saw some people typing. Let me just scroll back here real quick. I make dentures, so product-based, but service-based as well. So you could absolutely use all of that. So first you're visit, visible. <laughs> Tried to say that too fast. First you're visible, and then you have to prove that you're valid. You have to prove that you're good at what you do, which means that people look at reviews. Understand that 64% of people will make the decision not, not to do business with a business if they do not have good reviews. That does not mean that we want five-star reviews, but we need real reviews. And if your reviews are back from 2021, well, you're not current. And we're wondering if you're even in business anymore. So your reviews are very critical. Now understand that five-star review is wonderful to reach for, but we're looking for 4.2, 4.3, 4, because we want to know it's real, that you're not putting out fake reviews there. And understand with Google, especially with Google, your reviews weigh so heavy on Google's algorithm on being relevant or the distance that you're at or prominence. So it actually builds in the prominence score, your quality score with Google and the five stars only count if you have the stars and text underneath. So just a five star with no text underneath is never figured into Google's algorithm or into your five star rating. So there has to be some text underneath. So as we look at our reviews, we have to know are we asking for those reviews? Because most of the time, 92% of the time that businesses don't have reviews is because they never ask. And the time to ask is when you've delivered a good product or service. You can ask anytime and you can ask at the bottom of invoices in the profile link to your socials at the bottom of email. Your email signature is a great place to put that as well too, but make it easy for them. It's important if you can ask right then and there, maybe you even have a QR code that you have on a tabletop when they're dining or when they're doing business 
business with you that they can scan. For a lot of service-based businesses, what I do for them is I do QR codes so they have it on their phone. So if they've provided good service to somebody, they can say, if you would live us a great review, it'd be great. They bring it up. It's a picture on their phone. That person snaps it with their phone. It takes them to that site and they can easily leave it and it goes straight to Google so they can build their five-star rating. Again, for you, are you asking for reviews? Are you showing that you are valid? You are credible at what you do. None of us want to work with experts that were great back in 1999. Makes no difference to us now. We want to know somebody who's an expert in 2023. How do you create a QR code? And there's a lot of good resources for it, but I just use bit.ly, so bit.ly, I use the free version, and you can use that to get unique QR codes, as well as URLs, just like I dropped in there earlier, where it's bit.ly slash um, valuable visibility. Those are all done free, okay? I, I like free or small fee. I'm a bootstrap marketer, so I definitely like to keep it very, very nimble and getting that and lifting that bottom line as quickly as possible. So how do you prove that you're valuable? I won't have any inventory. I'll have an ebook and digital downloads. How will I set up a Google profile? Oh, you can set up a Google profile by um, Lynette. You would actually suppress, so you don't want um, Google to show your address, but you do want to answer the fourth question when you set up your Google business profile is, yes, you're at a location and you want people to come in, so you don't want to answer that. You want to click no. You deliver product and services to customer's location. A download is delivering to their location, okay, because you're not delivering it to you and then sending it to them. They're getting at their location, all right? All right, so as we look here, are you valuable? Are you visit, visible, valid, and valuable? Is there social capital, so either in their, your social reviews or comments or your own reviews, are they seeing that you're valuable, okay? So I'm gonna talk for a minute about social capital ROI and then I'm gonna go into a live demo. And this can be done online or offline, okay? So ROI is very specific because I see people all the time. You know, I, I'm actually, as I said, based in Midland, Odessa, Texas, so the Permian Basin. And I'll see people go to networking events. I'll see people jump online. Um, maybe they're, you know, they're in a Facebook group or a Facebook community and they're just making connections, but they really don't have a clear strategy. And that's such a waste of time for we who are in small business. We need to be able to get cash flow going and to be able to start building and growing our business. So it's important to make sure that we are well connected either online or offline. So this works either way. When I talk about social capital, I am talking about the people. So it is about the connections because it does not just who you know, it's who knows you well. All right. So it's not just who you know, but it, who knows you well. So at 98.6, this is body temp. That means we basically know somebody exists. That's it. We have no idea, no clue what they do at all. All right. When we know somebody at a 104 level, we have an idea of, mm, they might know your title, but that doesn't mean anything. If you tell me I am an oil and gas compressor um, maintenance engineer, I have no idea what that means because I don't really understand that business. So you need to explain that to me. And we may have that kind of connection with somebody. We have other connections that we're close to. We call those 211 connections. 211 connections are people that we know enough to say, hey, well, you know, hey, meet us at the bar or let's go have coffee, grab coffee, let's meet up for breakfast. We like spending time with them, but still we may not know exactly what they do. How many of you have ever been in the situation where you're at Thanksgiving dinner or an event and somebody you say, hey, you know, I do this or they find out all of a sudden that you do this. They realize what you do and they say, oh my gosh, I wish I knew that. I just hired somebody or just did business with somebody who did this and they, I weren't, wasn't real happy with them. I didn't know you did that. There's a lot of people at 211 Connection that we know that way. We know them enough by name, first name. We might know who their spouse, maybe even their children, um, or maybe even where they live. So we know a little bit more about them, but they are not somebody that we really understand what they do. So a 212 connection, if you understand, how, that's when water, water boils. So there's a big difference between making lukewarm tea and when water boils, okay? And that's 212. This is somebody who really knows what our best customer looks like and sounds like. They really understand when they hear the phrase, hey, I, I know somebody who's confused about marketing and they've tried to work with agencies or they've been going to marketing webinars and classes. That's something that I teach my 212 connections that if you hear that, that's a good connection for me. And I would love to meet them. If you hear somebody say, well, you know, I'm with a chamber and we're putting our program together. That's a good connection for me. So they know that they know it's not not just all right 
you know, somebody here wants to, to have a talk to you and do this, that they know that it's hey, a chamber of commerce person or maybe a score or an SBDC or a college wants to bring me in. That's what they know and they're looking for. So it fine tunes their efforts and it truly is just like it's on us to be experts in our customer. It's on us to teach our 212 connections, the curriculum of what it takes to connect and who that best customer is for us, what they need to look for or listen for. So as I say this, what do I mean by ROI? It's your referral network. I truly believe there are 18 people. It's how I built my business and how I've helped several, several businesses build their business online and offline. That a 212 connection with people in these areas is important. So you need at least six people here. See, you don't need to go to networking events or Facebook groups saying, I hope I meet somebody who can help me. You can have a clear plan going, oh, okay, I know somebody who is in my contact sphere who can help me, who refers. I know somebody who's a satisfied client. Um, I have somebody that I do business with, so I am their best customer. They want to eat, and so they want to eat, and they want to make sure that I eat and I spend money. So they will help me grow my business because I'm their best customer, and they don't want me to go away. Uh, so, but maybe I don't have really a staff or team member or um, who you've given a referral to. Maybe I've not given a referral, so I need to go look for that now. Who's going to be that person that I build a relationship that maybe I have a 98.6 relationship with and I need to build a 212 so that I can give them a referral and feel customer, I feel comfortable, I'm sorry, with them. It could be somebody within your occupation. This is a great referral network. I love scores for this too because they can help you really understand they walked in that path and they've held that position before. So somebody in the occupation, you need six of each of these, six in your referral, you need six in occupation or our opportunity. So it could be trainers and consultants. I love working with actual people who are at, even auditors because they will tell me what's coming down the line and I can start preparing businesses that I work with or do a presentation about it, right? And then also your influencer network. It could be somebody who really has helped you out. It could be maybe somebody who is in a non-competitive business who absolutely serves your best customer. So this is important. If you have all six, that's 18 people, six in influencer, six in occupation, six in referral, that's ROI, then you have the 18 people that you need that can help you grow your business online and offline to make the kind of connections that you need. You always hear that you're six degrees away from Kevin Bacon or from anybody else. You're actually closer now online and you can get there. There is not anybody or anything that I have been not been able to do with this. It used to be that we used to dream about working with web series creators, comic book creators, manga book creators. We used to dream about that. And then in 2016, we went to our first San Diego Comic-Con, the International Comic-Con. And now we serve clients and customers that are involved, actively involved in Comic-Con. A lot of the graphics that you see at San Diego Comic-Con are actually ones that we have done, our team has done. So that started as we've never been to Comic-Con and we don't even know how to get in to now being actively involved in presenting there. So keep that in mind, that you could do that with the right kind of connections. And that's why I love school or an SBDC because they bring to the table a lot of incubators and women's business centers do this too. They bring to the table already people that can help and serve you in this way so you get a jump start on this. Okay? So as we look here, who is in your network? Oops, there we go. I was losing my place. Who is in your network? Is this how we should approach LinkedIn? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I use this for LinkedIn. I use this also for any of the socials. So I am not just on Twitter for just being on Twitter and broadcasting, even though that was the purpose back in 2008. I formed one of the top 10 Twitter chats in the world, which is um, Brand Chat. And it just started with eight of us. Now I've got, I think, 16,700 people following me on Twitter, but it started just eight of us having three, really, at first, starting and having a conversation and deciding to build and grow each other's network. And we built 18 for each other through there, too. So they were also a key component of doing this. So a retired school teacher, yes, that would be a great connection for you. How far back would you go? Like a retired, yes, because they've walked the walk, right? They can let you know where the pitfalls are and what to be concerned about and some of the changes that they've seen 
because a lot of times there are changes that happen that people don't see and then they forget that maybe there's something that was taught before that they forgot. Remember, a lot of times whatever worked, we forget doing it just because we get into the habit of doing something else and we're always looking forward. So sometimes, Brian, this is very helpful to you and that you have somebody who can talk about those changes and maybe it'll provide reminders and key steps for you that you need to include in your business too. So having OPE, other people's experience, is just as valuable as other people's money. All right, do you have somebody, an influencer, and then truly understanding how all of this flows. That is what I love talking about in our Market Moments community and making sure people put this into practice and make sure it's practical. So I do want to offer to you the five-day visibility challenge before I go into a live demo. Okay, so let me show this to you too. If you want to use this QR code, it's a free five-day visibility challenge to get you into the habit of starting to be visible and to look to see what your customers are actually doing. So this gives Get you totally immersed again it's hundred percent free you can find it at bitly get found in five or take a quick snap of that QR code and you're good to go you could also review me remember what I said about asking for review when you've provided good service if I've been helpful to you today and I again I'm going to show you the live demo in just a moment but if I've been helpful to you, then I would love a review. You don't have to give me one, but I would be very appreciative. If you did, you can find me at ReviewMaria.com. See how I made that easy? This is actually going to my Google site, but I just went ahead and used ReviewMaria.com because a lot of times those Google site links are a lot of gibberish and that's hard to share. You can share it in a link, but right here when I'm presenting in front of you and saying it out loud, it's hard for me to be able to say that and you capture that. But hopefully you know how to spell the word review. And then Maria is M-A-R-I-A, -A, okay? And then, of course, we have our Market Moments community. When you do access the replay, the slides, and the quick gift that I gave you out there, you can see exactly what this is and how I can help you be able to start putting this together. Plus, reach out to your Google partner because they are truly vested in your success. Your success <clears throat> excuse me. And they also have the local resources, and I'm all about local business, okay? So do reach out to your Google partners. All right, so let me go to a live demo before we go into Q&A, and we'll talk more about how you can apply what you learned. All right, let me stop this share, and I'm going to go into a live demo because there's a few things that I do want to show you. So let me go here and stop for a minute. All right. And let me bring up, hold on just a second. I've got to grab it. The first thing is, I believe, that handout I gave you. I buried it. Um, but I gave you a handout. Hold on just a second. This is always the hard part because I bury my, my things, uh, my resources. I did bury it well. Oh my goodness, here it is. All right. Sorry about that. Let me show that with you. Okay, so in the link where the handout is, where the link where the handout is, oh, where to catch the handouts at? Sure, let me um, actually drop that. Hold on here. I'm going to drop that in the chat so you get the link to where the handout is and where the replay will be later this afternoon. And what you can see here is in the actual um, link, you'll see there is a handout there for you about content marketing and understanding your ideal client. So hopefully you all, let me make sure you're seeing this on the screen. You absolutely are. If we scroll down here, your ideal customer, it gives you the chance to talk about who that customer is, what their biggest challenges are, how you help them. Again, remember, this doesn't mean that you can't serve everybody, anybody, and somebody. You can, but you want to not miss this best customer. You need to be able to connect with them in a way that truly resonates and they get, they start building trust with you because they understand you value them and you get them. And who should not be your target audience? Who's not the best customer for you? All right. So as we look at the content worksheet, when you go to the next page in the handout, you're going to see things that you may not be familiar with. Tofu is top of funnel. So when you're working through a funnel, a funnel is built on awareness, consideration. So it starts at awareness is the top, then consideration, conversion, which is the action you want them to take, the success action you want them to take, loyalty and then advocacy so there's top of funnel that's awareness so just making sure you're visible middle is where you get consideration conversion and then bottom of funnel is 
perhaps, or actually middle is where you get consideration, sorry, and bottom funnel is where you get loyalty and then advocacy. So this is somebody who already is at the bottom of the funnel. So when you look at a funnel, right, it's at wide at the top, smaller at the bottom. Exactly what is it that you need to offer to help them get to doing business with you? So you've got top where they generally know you, bottom where they're building some trust with you. They really see that you can serve them. So some of those marketing goals is at the top, you need to increase awareness, maybe you need to retarget, middle of funnel, maybe this is the goals you need to do, and for bottom of funnel, this is what you also need to make happen. So this will help you fine tune your time because we only all get 86,400 seconds in any given day. And if we're not using it to lift the bottom line or getting us closer to the goal, then why are we doing it? This even tells you the content type, what helps with top of funnel, what helps with middle of funnel. All right, and what help it helps what helps you with bottom of funnel, and what needs to get what you need to get there. Okay, so I hope that helps you. The downline link on the replay site only opens to the cover page. Yes, Monique, if you go all the way to the right, click sign in. You have to create a sign in. Okay, so that's what you need to do. I apologize, I just showed that at the beginning of the session, but I didn't show it again because I didn't want to switch off of the presentation. But I did show that when you get to that link, go to the top right hand corner that signs in and you need to put your email address and then create a password because it is password protected for anybody that's in this session, not for anybody else. Does that help you? I can show you that in a moment how to do that if you don't know. Um, let me make sure I have got, let me go here. And let me drop this so you can see it. All right, let me bring it up to the screen too. All right, here you go. It should look like this. See this right here where it says sign in at the very top right there at the search at the bar, actually at the very top. Click on that and then you'll now be given the opportunity to sign in and create a password. If you've already been inside this actual platform, then you might need to reset your password. Okay, I'll update. So no worries, Monique. No worries. Got it. All right. Everyone, let's see what else I needed to show you. A few things. Um, I needed to show you the door. All right. I do need a few of your help, your help here. Um, I'm going to throw this up here. Make sure that's showing up there. Let me make it bigger because I am broadcasting. I need three of you to share your website in the chat. Who wants to share your website in the chat so I can show you this? All right. I've got Jennifer, you're fast. Oops, okay, I'm gonna go to Jennifer was first, so let me go to Jennifer. When you are in Chrome, you have to be in a Chrome browser to do this, okay? I'm gonna go to H, T, so this is Chrome. I have it incognito because it's not picking up my location. I'm gonna put HTTPS colon backslash backslash, okay? So I'm just gonna put that in. Or actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna put that in. Apologize, let me, <laughs> I went to something else. I'm gonna put site, S-I-T-E, knowing too many websites in my head, all right? I'm gonna to go to site. Let me, forgive me for that, Jennifer. I'm going to site on a Google Chrome browser. You can only do this on a Chrome browser. Now I'm going to paste your website, Bella Derm, A Derma, Bella Derma, A-OK, okay, okay Bella Derma, OK, sorry, Oklahoma, dot com. You don't need to put the HTTPS or anything, but let me just slow down for a moment and let you know if your site does not have an S secure, if it's not secure, then there is nothing in the world you can do to get to the top of Google search. Doesn't matter what you pay. Google penalizes you heavily in the algorithm if your site is not secure. So you have to have an S. Make sure you all have that on your site. So as I go site, Bella, Derma, OK, I see. I don't want Google to know that right now. I see six results. So that means that that's all Google is seeing right now. This is showing you what the search engine actually sees. Let me make that bigger. So I put site here in the search bar in the URL, the address bar. I put Bella Derma, okay, remember, and .com. I remember I'm in a Google Chrome browser and it's telling me you only have six search results. So if you have 16 pages to your website, and you have other online presence, it's not showing up here, Google doesn't see it. So it means you need to enter it into Google's library. I do a whole session on how you can enter things into Google Search Console. If you're interested in that, get with me or get with the Google partner that invited you so they can ask me to come back to do this, okay? Because it's pretty in depth. It's not hard, it's just walking you through. I like to walk you through exactly what you need to do next. All right, let me see. 
Sharon is next. Okay, Sharon, I don't need the www, so I'm going to not save that part. But remember, I'm in a Google Chrome browser, site, S-I-T-E, colon, and then I got her website. Wow, 71. So 71, Google sees 71 like this of your pecans. Okay, now I'm hungry for pecans. But you can see the South Texas pecan, roasted pecans, in shell pecans, all of this is here. It's showing well. Now, some people like to brand these to make sure, let's say that they're maybe it's roasted pecans at South Texas um, pecans. I'm imagining that was, that's what STX means, South Texas pecans. But they could put that brand up here because they want to get a little bit more brand visibility and consistency even when i was looking here let's see um you might want to do the same thing here with bella dermacy you see she did it here but it's not done on any of the other um, pages that google see all right let me do one more um tony hello tony all right remember i'm in a google chrome browser that's where people miss make a mistake at the beginning site and then here Google sees 409 pages. This must be an e-commerce site then, right? But I do see, you know, you got our story contact. You just want to make sure that Google is seeing everything that you want it to um, in the format that you want it to, okay? Because sometimes some pages here will, I don't see it in this instance, but sometimes when you look at pages, you'll see pages that are maybe like named image or something. Um, so it's important as you take a look at that to see if everything's named the way you want it to. And a lot of times when I say naming your page, remember the keywords that people search with. Keywords are the words that people search with, okay? So that's really important. All right, I could only show three this time. And lastly, before we leave, I do want to show you, um, let's see. One last thing, if you're looking at keywords, I'll throw this up. You can get a Google Ads account. It will ask you to put a um, credit card in. You don't have to, just skip it. But when you have a Google Ads account, then you can go in here to Tools. You don't have to, again, pay for any Google Ads. You can click Discover Keywords, and you can put your actual website in. So I'm just going to use Tony because you're the last one I saved. Then you can get results, and it will show you the keywords that are being searched right now at the volume they're being searched right now and it'll let you know whether or not this is effective and what people are searching for as you get to know your customers better. This is 100% free. It works just as well, <coughs> excuse me, as any other keyword planner, okay? All right, we are two minutes before time and I do wanna answer your question. So let me go to this next then. Let me see where I am bringing up Q&A. Sorry about that, let me go here. Um, Oops. I don't know why it's not showing it to me. Hold on just a minute. <coughs> That's me and my West Texas dust. There we go. Maybe it brings it up now. It is not. So let me see if I can get this to switch for me. I'm just going to do this. There we go. We can start this way right now. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I am going to go ahead and turn off the recording.